we have this multi-blade that we'd like to machine from a solid pellet. But before then, we want to prepare this in designer. And we also maybe want to do a bit of customization of this multi-blade. So as we can see, we've got the pellet and we've got the blade. Let's start customizing this blade. So first of all, I'm going to go to the wireframe tab and I'm going to say ISO parametric curve. I'm going to use 0.8, which is 80% of the blade. I'm going to go along the V direction and I'm going to select the surface. That looks all good for me. Next thing, I need to split this curve, this polyline or the spline line. So I'm going to go to the split element. I'm going to go by point this time. I'm going to select this spline. Now I'm going to establish where I would like to do the split, maybe at this point there. I will now turn the blade off and you can see the de deviation from the colors in the spline lines. So we'll turn off the purple line. We want to extend this for now. So it goes past this blade area here, past this blade, because we're going to trim this area. So for that, we have a command called extend. We can do by both ends, which is what I want to do. And I'm going to select my element. Then it's asking me by a value. So at the moment, you can do by curve, you can do by segment, or you can do by arc. I'll use segment for now. Turn on my blade, passes that area there passes that area there. We'll now go and revolve that spline line we've created. In the surface tab, revolve, turn off multi-select, select that curve, center of rotation would be over there. We're gonna go around the Z. We've now got that revolve throughout surface. This will now become our new shroud surface of this blade we're going to manufacture. So let's do a bit of customization. Now that we've got that, we want to do under the solids, cut bodies, select our component, select our new shroud surface, And as you can see, we trim the front side, which is the correct one. And that looks really good. We will hide the blade for now. We now want to create a turn billet for pre-manufacturing or stage machining. To do that, we're going to keep the shroud surface that we've created. However, we're going to create closed body or closed solid. Select the surface, and we have a new closed solid from that. Next, we want to extend this area past the fillets of this blade. To do that, we highlight the surface, right click, move. We can do by extrude or move. For now, we're going to use the move command. Just move that slightly. That looks good. We're now going to change over to the extrude command, come to the bottom area, select the surface, and now we drag it down. That looks good. We have now got that extrusion done. Next, we want to create a boss around this part. So let me just turn the blade off. For that, I'm going to do cylinder. This time I'm going to do unite. I'm going to pick a point, which is that point there. Radius of 22. 
Yeah, that looks actually right. 22 by 12. Say OK. And just establish that we do have one solid, which is good. But I don't like this bit here. So I want to create like a nice blend around this area for the tool to roll on and off. So I'll add in a blend for now. I'll leave it at five, just to have something. Looks all right. Before I prove that, just check if it's looking all right. Happy of that. Now I've got a really nice part that I can go and put on the lathe to machine for pre-stage machining from that bullet. Before I do that, I just want to rename this now to my turn bullet. And say save. I can delete these two splines. I do not need them. Everything's good for manufacturing. Over to the home tab. I'll send this now to my edge cam. We've now entered the edge cam environment. And we want to create the workflow from left to right. So the first thing we would like to do is pick some stock. We then want to select a fixture, some jaws or some reverse jaws or something like that. So we will put it to a front view so that we can move this part accordingly so that we can have enough clearance for the tool to come down at the trailing area. I'm going to say 90. That looks all right. We're going to maybe change this value here, say 197. So we now know we've got a very accurate load and clamping position, as we would expect in the real world. Then we're going to create or load a machine. We're going to type H. We're going to select Hermley. We'll use this current toolkey that's available, but we want to make it open slot so that we can bring in tools from this toolkit or add tools to this toolkit. Say next, next. We now have a really nice setup here where we can see the machine, stock and the part really well assembled as we would expect in the real world. We can then go and explode the access view so that we can create some features for this. I'll hide the machine and we will hide the chuck. We'll deactivate the stock layer and we will now create a few features for manufacturing. We'll now move over into the feature tab area. And then we will create a couple of features. So I'm going to select face. We're going to use pick. We're going to say left hand blade. And we're going to change the color maybe to Green. We're going to select this blade surface, and that blade surface. We're then going to create another blade feature, uh, feature or surface. And this time we're going to call that right hand, as the previous one was left hand. change the color again, maybe to a lighter green. 
select the filler, select the blade surface, say OK. We then create another feature. This time we're going to call it the hub. Maybe change the color as well. Maybe select the hub surface. Create a last feature, which will be our sprout. Change the color again, maybe to like a yellow. Select that surface there. And we've completed the feature generation for this blade to be machined. We can now go into the machining environment or the machining tab. We can just turn off a cup and we can go to the tool store. We're going to use a taper tool. We're going to put it in position number one. We maybe change the color as well. Say OK. We will create an index move, move it into a top rotation, and then we want to create a rapid move. We're going to say x0, y0, z200. And the tool is moved 200 mil above the data. We will now go and select the advanced five axis cycle. Change the feeds, maybe, say, 9,000 meters a minute. Twelve thousand RPM. We're going to do multi-blade machining. We're going to start off with some roughing. We'll use the morph between the shroud and up for now to have a consistent cut. We will go for a zigzag from the leading edge and maybe from the center away with climbing. We're going to say five mil step down. We're going to say two mil step over. And where you would like to end, maybe say 40% on the blade area. So only in about 40%. We then go over to the PAR definition tab, and we now select the features. So we have to select the two blade surfaces, and then we go and select the hub surface, the shroud surface. Maybe put an offset on the blades by one mil. We have nine blades on this multi-blade. We want to machine two of them. And because I'm doing roughing, I'm not too worried about too much of a point distribution. That will obviously be different in a finishing environment. So I'll just put in there a point one. In the tilting environment, we maybe want to have a lead angle of five. And then 30 on the side tilt looks all right. As you can see in this image, we have a main blade and a splitter blade with a tilt in between and 30 would be a good one to start off with. We then come over to the clearance type. We would like to use conical this time so that we get a conical shape on the tool. We then move over to the link command and we'll leave it at automatic for now. On the edges, we don't, we can add in maybe two mil on each end. And we're gonna to trim to the current stock or we're gonna use the current stock. It will now calculate the toolpath. And we can see a really nice toolpath. Layer to edge cam simulator to check for any collision before we generate any code for the machine.
we can now send the tool home to its tool change position and then generate some NC code. Say OK. We'll add the tool to the toolkit. NC codes ready for machining.